In this video, join Lucy and me as we take a look at my budget approach to getting some of my gear mounted onto the roof of my Nissan Frontier. How did you mount all that stuff up there? Well, basically I used Unistrut, like I did on the Forester. Unistrut is this industrial material that's generally used for running electrical conduit and other industrial uses. Why did you decide to use Unistrut? A, I had a bunch of it. B, it's not that expensive to buy if you need more. I actually found all of this Unistrut at my local reuse recycling center. It was very, very affordable. It's easy to configure and reconfigure. There's lots of different ways you can connect it together. And I love that, it, uh, that every piece is just lined with holes, which just makes all these opportunities to mount stuff onto it. I had built a Unistrut rack on the Forester and I had the materials, I just went back to it again. You can watch my original Unistrut roof rack video for more details on using this material. There are also a ton of other Unistrut roof rack videos that have come out over the past year or so. How did you mount it to the Frontier's roof rails? Well, I found these interesting U-bolts with these plastic liners. In fact, it's a viewer who turned me on to them and they were at the McMaster Car website. These particular U-bolts just happened to fit perfectly onto the tubular roof rails of uh, like a Nissan Frontier or a Nissan Xterra. I found it does take a little persuasion to get the metal U-bolt over the plastic liner. So with these U-bolts attached to the frontier side rails, they don't quite line up with the holes in the super strut. This one, it's just right, but that one is off a little bit. I ended up slightly enlarging one hole of the unistrut to allow the other U-bolt to line up. This may vary depending on the specific brand of strut you're using. Oh yeah, that worked out well. Is this really sturdy enough? It's actually quite sturdy. It's remarkable how well it holds. Now, I had a rack built of this stuff on my Forester for a couple of years, and I bounced that Forester over all kinds of rough terrains, over sand dunes. Uh, I've had parts of the car airborne at times, carrying a pretty heavy load on the Unistart roof rack. And of all of the things on my roof, the Unistrut components are the only pieces that never moved and never needed to be tightened. But wait, you can't paint galvanized metal. I know, you can't paint galvanized metal. And yet, I did it anyway. Everyone says you can't paint galvanized metal, and it's true that the paint does not want to stick to galvanized metal very well. But the paint on here is not for protection because the stuff doesn't rust, it's galvanized. I had no issues with rust at all. The paint is just so that it doesn't look like bare metal up on the roof. And it definitely gets uh, a little beat up. It's easy for it to get scratched and scuffed. But the nice thing about just using plain flat black spray paint is that I can just touch it up really easily. The only place where you have to really worry with the Unistrut is any place where you actually cut it and cut through the metal because then you're exposing metal that doesn't have the galvanized plating on it so it can rust there. So those are the spots I like to make sure I've got paint on. So why is everything on the roof and not the bed? Well I'm going to be sleeping in the back of the truck. I don't want all that stuff in here with me. I've got other plans for the bed of the truck and there's not going to be room for everything in the back so I had to put some stuff on the roof. So how did you mount the traction boards? Basically, I just put some long bolts up through the Unistrut. It's similar to what I had on the Forester. I had used four on the Forester. I've only got two on here now. This is actually sort of a work in progress. I've got some ideas for a different way to secure these and possibly even lock them on there. But for now, what I've got up here is, uh, is quite sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So what's this little tab sticking out right here? That's just a spot to mount the uh, the flag for when we go on the dunes. Oh. Most drivable dunes areas require mounting a flag to your vehicle to prevent collisions as you come up over the top of dunes. I see you mounted some storage cases. What happened to the toolie box that was on the Forester? 
I got rid of the Thule box. It actually had a crack in it. I was getting some water in it actually for quite some time. It was, it was time for that box to go and ultimately I don't think it would have fit very nicely up here on the truck. So what are these cases exactly? These are actually Pelican cases. They're used, I got these off of eBay for less than half of what they cost new. It appeared to be some sort of military surplus or something. They came with some sort of preformed foam insert inside that was designed to hold some sort of equipment. I was able to rip all of the foam out and regain all of the space inside of these cases. They're completely weatherproof, dustproof, extremely solid. So to attach these cases to the pieces of Unistrut I have running front to back, I'm gonna do it a little bit unconventionally in that I'm gonna put a bolt through the nut from underneath so that it sticks up through. I'm gonna position my bolts right at these feet spots on the bottom of the cases it seems as good a spot as any to drill through and there's a little extra plastic there I suppose maybe makes it a little stronger. Alright this is just sort of test fitting in theory. I can't actually mount these on while the truck is in the garage because uh, I won't be able to get through the door. So once I do have these mounted on here this truck will never go in this garage again. Oh yes! Nice. Those bolts have a pretty snug fit in there, but I am still going to seal up with some RTV silicone to help weatherproof those holes. Well, I wasn't 100% certain that was completely going to work, but I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. Now these cases won't be carrying any significant weight, really just some lightweight but dirty kind of stuff that I don't want to store inside the truck or inside my camping space. Things like tarps, my snatch strap, my tire repair kit, some assorted odds and ends for doing repairs, jumper cables, my gas siphon, just assorted odds and ends that I generally don't need to access on a regular basis, but that I need to have with me on the trail all the time, just in case. I've seen a lot of people use rifle cases mounted on the roof rack in a sort of similar way because it's, it's a nice storage space that's weatherproof and not too tall. And I did look at rifle cases. The rifle cases in general tend to be a little shallower than this, although maybe a little bit longer than what the two of these come out to. So it's probably a similar amount of space. Although I do feel I've got a little bit more flexibility for some slightly bulky items if needed. The other thing about the rifle case is that They've got like, I don't know, there's latches at each end and then maybe four across the front. So to get at one little thing that you need in one corner of the case, you've got eight latches to undo. Here I've got two latches on each of these boxes. I only got two latches to undo to get into whichever box I need to get into. And as they're actual Pelican cases, these are much higher quality than whatever rifle case I would have found. The price that I paid for the two of these was actually less than buying a, you know, sort of middle of the road, reasonably well reviewed rifle case, but not even something that was up to the, to the quality of a Pelican case or something like that. So I'm really, I'm really happy with the value that I got here. These can be locked with a padlock and I bought a set of three locks that all use the same key so I can put uh, locks on each of these and on my gasoline and just have a single key and have everything on the roof secure. And I know these little locks are not the pinnacle of security and the lock picking lawyer could get that apart in 30 seconds. But the thing is there's nothing of value that's going to be stored in these. This is really just to discourage the casual thief from checking around in there. Why do you have these now instead of the fuel packs from the Forester? Uh, the fuel packs worked really well on the Forester. I ran that for a couple of years and it never leaked even though it, I had it sitting horizontally on the Forester. The main problem that I had with the fuel packs was that 
uh, in warm weather, sunny weather, it needed to be vented on a regular basis. It would it would swell up, and you know having to vent the gas cans is not that big of a deal. But because I had it sitting flat on the Forester, I would have to disconnect it each time and stand it upright in order to relieve the excess pressure that had built up. I really wanted to get away from that. I could have put the fuel packs up here on the roof, but I didn't want to get any taller than all this already was, and I didn't want to have it sitting flat again. So I decided to try and find another solution. And I originally looked at putting a pair of smaller metal jerry cans up here, but those get expensive, the holders get expensive. So I started trying to think of my own idea. I found these two gallon gas cans on sale at Bymart, one of our local chains, for $10 each. I've got $30 in the gas cans and that actually holds six gallons of gas, whereas my fuel packs hold 3.5 gallons. Additionally, having the six gallons of fuel split into three two gallon containers makes it much easier to get it up onto this much taller roof instead of trying to heft a single very heavy five or six gallon container. Where'd you get the gas can holder? I made it. I welded it myself. It is about $15 worth of steel, not even. And I'll tell you guys more about that probably in a dedicated video. Is that your old Oxbeam light bar? Yeah, it is. And this may not be the permanent solution, but I wanted to get something up there just to sort of see what it looks like. It is a little diminutive on this truck. I have to admit it was perfect on the Forester. I'm not sure yet what I might do going forward. I've got a few other ideas, but for now, I've got the ability to get some extra light on the trail right away, even if I don't have the final setup figured out yet. The only way I could fit my old shovel onto this new configuration was to go buy an additional piece of Unistrut. It was actually cheaper to just buy a longer shovel. So what did it cost to put all of this together? It's a little more than $20 of used Unistrut. If you bought the Unistrut new, it would probably run you maybe somewhere between $50 and $100 to buy that much Unistrut new, which is still ultimately not that expensive. You do have to use special nuts to connect the Unistrut. Those aren't cheap. I mean, it seems like a pack of about five of those maybe costs three fifty, four dollars dollars so they're almost a buck a piece. And I, I must have... I don't know how many I've got on there. 15? I mean, let's say another $20 of miscellaneous hardware. Let's say around $15 worth of steel to make the gas can holder. The cases were $55 each. The U-bolts the to attach to the roof rails, these were $850 each. So with shipping and everything, that was probably about $45. That all adds up to approximately. How much it'll cost you to put something like this together will depend on how much Unistrut you use, how you configure it, how many bolts and connectors you need, what other things you end up adding to it. But it truly is a budget way to get some gear up onto your roof regardless of what you drive. I hope you found this interesting or helpful in some way. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about how I pulled this together. So one of my hobbies that I found over quarantine was I really enjoy making wire wrapped rings. This is one of them. I discovered that I really enjoyed making these. I'm now making rings that you can purchase and order. All of them are real stones or gems. So it's not like glass or plastic or anything. All handmade. So you can go to the website and you can browse through the listings of uh, different stones such as like black onyx or citrine or amethyst, all those types of fancy stones. And you can click on that and you can put your ring size in. I go from ring size 1 to 15. For now, we're using eBay to manage Lucy's ring sales. Click on the message to seller to add your ring size to the order. And I will make your ring and you will ship it out. So if you want to get a ring for yourself or friends or family, nice, yeah. So why is everything on the roof and not the bed? Well, can you ask it one more time? We don't know why. 
Yeah. Because I didn't forget to think about what my answer was. So you are gonna, oh my gosh, put your stupid phone away. Is that your oxping? <laughs> is that okay? Hold up, I need to say, is that your old? Ox is that your beam? old oxbeam light bar? Oxbeam. 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 That's what I'm saying. Okay, hold up. Ready? Mm -hmm. Is that your old oxbeam light bar? <laughs> I say, sir, is that your old life? <laughs>